How's it going guys? Welcome back to the Black Metal Rebellion. I'm your host Jesse Morgan and this room is fucking hot as balls. Uh, yeah, so apparently five days has slipped away super duper quickly and yeah, it's been pretty crazy. And i kind of been stressed out a bit recently too, not going to get into why, but uh, it's hard to do videos when you're not in the right mood and I don't want to come on here and, and you know, be a boner killer for you. So, anyways... Uh, it's time for another horror movies to watch or avoid episode and uh, we've got a few interesting things here to start off something ridiculous uh, it's a two DVD disc set one of Vampire's Kiss with Nicolas Cage and another film called High Spirits High Spirits was kind of like an old-timey haunted house movie with uh, the guy from Oh god damn it, I don't know. It's got Daryl Hannah, Peter O'Toole, Steve Guttenberg, Beverly D'Angelo, Jennifer Tilly, Liam Neeson's even this in this thing. Uh it's a pretty interesting movie. It's it's there's some comedy parts that kind of land flat. There's some parts that are pretty funny, but most of it's just slapstick. Um like I said, it's kind of like an old timey ghost house style of movie. It's alright, and it hits that kind of nostalgia spot for you. Uh, I definitely give it about a 6 or 7 out of 10. Now, Vampire's Kiss. Now, you kind of have to be a fan of Nicolas Cage in order to enjoy this film because it is just the most ridiculous fucking thing in the entire world. Like, <laughs> and, it's, and it's fairly old, too. It, uh, what even year is it from? 1989? Yeah, and vamp and high high spirits is from 1988. So yeah, they're like 80s horror films. Uh, the vampires kiss one, like it just just look at the fucking face Nicolas Cage is making there. You can kind of tell what kind of ridiculous movie it is. But anyways, we we had to get it. It has some of the funniest Nicolas Cage isms that you could ever see in a movie. Just over the top, overacting, doing really crazy, unnecessary stuff for the, what the scene calls for. Uh, just some really outlandish, just cliche vampire things going on. It's more of a comedy than it is anything else. I definitely highly recommend watching it. Like, as a movie on its own, it's like a 4 out of 10. But like for a Nicolas Cage-ism-filled ridiculous movie, it's like a 9 out of 10. It's like his, probably his funniest fucking film that isn't supposed to be funny. Uh, but yeah, I really, really enjoyed this. Kind of glad to get some nostalgic 80s kind of weird horror films and a double disc here um, next is another multi-movie collection uh, now if you know me I like Jason Blumhouse and uh, Blumhouse films and all that kind of stuff the purge is more of the wife's thing I'm not really a big fan of the purge I just I don't really like the idea of criminals running rampant uh, for a whole fucking night or a whole day or whatever it is being allowed to you know do whatever they want basically rape kill uh fucking steal shit just all the worst things ever just so that people can get rid of their bad feelings i'm sorry no you're just gonna have to suck it up like everyone else and just you know deal with it like an adult so the the idea of the purge really is dumb to me and kind of rubs me the wrong way i guess politically um, but if you're into it for like the gore parts and the different killing scenes, that's pretty much what this is for. There's some interesting killing scenes, there's some interesting gore, there's some interesting kind of plot here and there in some of them. Uh, the first one's probably the best one in my opinion, and they're coming out with a prequel, the like the, the first purge or whatever. I'm not probably going to enjoy that at all, but uh, this was an okay uh you know three movie set of the purge and and if it's blumhouse i'm probably going to get it whether it's my favorite movie on the in the world or not just to complete my you know blumhouse films collection and james wan collection and all that other stuff uh but yeah i mean it is what it is and all three movies in one collection so that's nice nothing special about the discs just comes in the little flippy thing here uh, let me know what you thought of The Purge. Let me know if the politics, how the politics in the films rub you. Do you think there should be an actual purge? Uh, feel free to discuss in the comments section below. 
But yeah, it's like a 5 out of 10 for all these movies. The first one being the best one, but yeah. Alright, the next one is actually something kind of cool. I don't know if too many people have seen this one. Uh, and if you're a fan of Jessica Biel, she's in it. Uh, she's kind of weird in it. Um, she's not, you know, doing anything super sexy or, or, or you know, anything of that nature. But, uh, yeah, there's an interesting plot twist in this film, too. It's called The Tall Man, by the way, since I didn't mention it right away. Um, and, basically, there's this kind of hick town in the middle of nowhere where they're kids kind of go missing and the tall man takes them and there's like a mystery surrounding who the tall man is and why he's taking them and where he's taking them and all that stuff so anyways uh this hick couple ha has a, a kid after not having one for a long time or like the whole town not having kids for a long time and this this hick couple has one and it gets abducted or i think it dies i don't know uh either way then the oldest daughter of the hit couple, or no, the, there's a son that's missing of another couple as well, and they're trying to figure out how to get it back and whatnot, and then the twist happens and you're like, oh, I can't really give away too much, just because it's, at first, it, it comes across as what it shows you, like a tall man's coming and grabbing all the kids, but then something else happens, you're like, oh, this is what's really going on, but, um... I recommend this. There's not too much gore or anything. It's more of like a, a mystery horror kind of thing. And if you've got kids, it'll probably uh, uh, twist that little like like nerve uh, that you have about your kids going missing and stuff like that. Um, then the ending is kind of like a, a sojourn kind of bittersweet note. Um, but it makes you think, so, anyways, uh, definitely a really, really good film. Once you know the secret of it, though, you probably won't watch it, uh, again for a long time. You'll have to forget what it's about and then watch it again, which is kind of what we did. We kind of watched this, uh, on our laptop, like, a long time ago, and then forgot about it, and then I saw this at our local Deja Vu Discs, I'm like, I don't think we have this on, like, in a physical format. I should probably pick this up, so we rewatched it, and we're like, oh, yeah, but, no, it's a, it's a really good film. I'm gonna give it a 7.5 out of 10. Definitely recommend The Tall Man with Jessica Biel. Uh, I'm not sure what year it is. 2012, so it's pretty recent-ish. Uh, okay, next one is another Nicolas Cage film, and so is the one after that. Um, the wife and I are kind of going through a, a Nicolas Cage film phase, and if this thing could focus, that'd be fantastic. Uh, the next one's called Pay the Ghost. It's uh, it's pretty recent, I think. I think it's like a... Yeah, 2015... Um, and it's one of those ghost mystery horror films. And once again, if you've got kids, this will this will twist that little your kid goes missing nerve and like the anxiety of like how to get him back. Uh, this guy, Nicholas Cage, what's his character name in this? Mike Lawford. He's called Mike Lawford in this one. So Mike, he takes his kid to the carnival, the Day of the Dead, I think. And uh, he goes to buy some like cotton candy or some shit, and then his kid goes missing. But right before the kid goes missing, he, the kid's like, "Can we pay the ghost?" Because he sees like visions of this creepy-looking thing, and his dad's like, "What?" And then he, you know, then the cotton candy guy asks him for the money, so he gives him the money, and then his kid's just boom, gone. So he spends like like a few hours and a couple of days looking for him, and then the you know the law enforcement gets involved, and like a year passes almost. And, in in the story here and he's still looking for him still putting up flyers and looking around and then like he tries to figure out what the 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 twist is behind the ghost that took his kid and it's it's pretty interesting it's actually not bad and Nicolas Cage's acting isn't like laughable in this it's actually you know tolerable and he puts on a you know a good show as a dad I, I could see him being a pretty decent dad uh minus having his kid lost but that it's not it's not it's not, it's not his fault in this film you'll see but uh, yeah, if you if you can stand Nicolas Cage, uh, definitely check out Pay the Ghost. It's a cool, you know, haunted ghost mystery thing. Uh, all right, and the next one, once again, is another Nicolas Cage film. Uh, he's a he's a cop uh, looking f to catch this killer who's John Cusack. Um, he abducts hookers and uh, forces them to, which is weird, he, he, he abducts hookers and forces them to have sex at gunpoint 
and knife point, and then he takes them into the forest and sometimes kills them. And and there's only one uh, really really young hooker in this that Nicolas Cage is trying to find to to like spot him in a lineup and and like take this guy down and it's kind of a chase uh, between you know Nicolas Cage and John Cusack and you know. And there's some stuff in between that kind of happens with the, the young hooker and the pimp. And the pimp is fucking 50 cent, so that's kind of funny. Um, anyways, it's alright. It's kind of a slow burn. Uh, there's some, you know, up and down points in it. Uh, if you if you like the kind of murder mystery series, and if you like uh, the cop chases serial killer style of movies, pretty good. And once again, Nicolas Cage's acting is not too bad in this. So, yeah, um, both of these, I'm going to say, are, are probably about a... This one's probably a... Six and a half out of ten. This one's probably seven and a half out of ten. All right, next is a pretty pretty recent movie. Uh, a lot of people saw this in theaters and raved about it, loved it. It's kind of like the new big thing. So you know, the wife and I saw it in theaters, and it was it was pretty good uh, considering nobody talks in this movie. This is a quiet place. Uh, John Krasinski is actually a pretty cool character in this. The wife, Emily Blunt, she's... Um, fucking hell. She's in something else that we have. I can't remember what it is, but... Uh, it, it's actually a really, really good film. Uh, the premise is these aliens have landed, and they're, they've slowly killed all... Like, not all, but a lot of the population of the Earth. And they... Well, they detect you by hearing you. They got incredible sense of us uh, hearing, and if you make a sound, they pretty much you know jump on your ass and eat you right away. Uh, so basically, it just follows John Krasinski's family in this surviving in a post-alien uh, attack world, where you know these monstrous alien things are you know eating people, and people are trying to survive. Um, and some of the craziest, most tension-filled you know, events happen in this film, uh, like their youngest boy, I'm not spoiling anything, it happens within the first 10 minutes of the film, their youngest boy has this toy at the supermarket, they're going and scavenging for uh, food and stuff, and he has this toy that doesn't need fucking batteries, he can just play with it, but he decides to stick batteries in it and presses the button uh, at, while they're like walking away from the town, and it goes and the fucking dad turns around and just gives him like this holy shit you idiot look and then all you see is this like fucking the brushes and the trees start moving really really fast and well I'm not going to spoil it for you but uh, it uh, it's going to it's going to twist that nerve again if you've got kids uh, I know the wife was almost in tears at the part uh, that I'm talking about but You'll have to watch the movie and see if the kid survives or not, but it's uh, pretty intense. At the very fucking end of the movie, uh, spoilers by the way, they finally, they finally figure out a way to, you know, hurt these things besides just like taking a hatch to them or shooting them in the face, because even that doesn't really dispense them very well, because they're pretty armored once you finally see the creature. They got like, like, thorax-y kind of insect, like, thick fucking armor. Um, so shooting them and hitting them with an axe is just going to piss them off. Uh, so anyways, they kind of find it out at the very end and they kind of, uh, it alludes to a sequel and I think people are going to be lapping that sequel up. So this is actually a really good movie for, for it being like really, really quiet. Uh, they do have like a, some background ambiance throughout the movie and some music to kind of, you know, add stuff, but it's basically just supposed to be a tension builder with some like really, really like high emotive scenes and you're just wondering how the fuck they're gonna get out of this uh, there's a couple of gory parts but not too much um, and there's like a big reveal of what the creature looks like at the end but they don't show too much of it right away so uh, definitely check it out if you've not we bought it we thought it was really good I'm gonna give this an 8 out of 10 The Quiet Place and the last one is a really really recent movie that a lot of people have been freaking out about saying it's probably the best horror movie in, in years and it's uh, it's not bad. It, it really is pretty good. And there's a lot of scenes where you're just like, what the fuck? What in the fuck just happened? Holy shit! Like if you're into like the uh, like uh, like basically Blumhouse and James Wan horror films, like 
fuck? Where are all the goddamn movies that I have? Like, like, like Insidious, Sinister, The Conjuring, uh, all that kind of shit. But it, it has its own take. It, it's 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 hereditary, and it's kind of misleading in 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 the uh, trailer a bit. This chick, she's only around for the first ten minutes of the movie, but the trailer makes it seem like she's gonna be in there the entire fucking movie. Uh, spoiler, she kind of is, but not like that. Not in that form. Uh, but man, this movie is really fucking good. Like, there, there's some creepy-ass scenes. There, this, there's this one scene that kind of makes a joke out of the character. I don't know if they do it on purpose. Like, me and the wife laughed at, at really, really inappropriate parts in this movie. Uh, especially, I'm just going to spoil this one part, but the, the little girl here does this noise and, and it becomes a running gag throughout the film, or at least it did for me and the wife. I don't think it's supposed to be funny, but the, the wife and I find just weird things really, really funny. And that noise, I think, is supposed to signal that, that I'm, okay, spoiling another part, that the spirit of the daughter's around. And, and just it kind of lets the audience know that oh, something's gonna happen or you know, whatever It's kind of a uh, Wink wink something's gonna happen kind of thing and, and and just the noise is so funny for whatever reason to us But I don't think it's supposed to be and there's some scenes like I said that, that happened that, like the mother screaming at a certain thing That I don't know why we found it funny, but we did um Anyways, it's it's actually really really good. Check out Hereditary if you're into, um, like I said, the Blumhouse kind of series of Insidious, um, Sinister, Oculus, Dark Skies, par Paranormal Activities, like that kind of style of stuff. It, it also has its own kind of feel to it though. Uh, there, there's really really creepy scenes. Do not watch this by yourself in the dark because you'll need a second pair of pants. I hope you're wearing uh, your brown pants. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, this is really good. Highly recommend it. 9 out of 10. I don't think there's going to be a sequel to this just because of the way it ends. And the ending is kind of... mediocre. There's a couple of other movies that sort of end the same way. Uh... I think the fuck I can't remember the name of it. But we, there's two of them. It's not called The Exorcist. I don't know why my brain is going there. That's not what it's called. Anyways, check it out. Really, really cool stuff. Really freaky stuff, and and some really unintentionally funny stuff. So yeah, nine out of ten. Hereditary. So anyways, that's it. I hope you enjoyed. Uh, I hope I inspired you to check out some of these films, and I hope it inspired you to avoid some and not waste your time. Uh, if you've seen any of these, let me know what you thought of them. Let me know what your favorite one is. Let me know if you've seen The Quiet Place or Hereditary, or if you plan to. And uh, that's enough for me. This room is fucking hot. For glory for the rebellion, Melzarella out, because I'm melting.